Hey everyone, welcome to the Gambia. We're about to embark on our adventure, discovering the country. But before we do, we actually need to explore a very important matter because a lot is changing currently in the Gambia. The Gambia is going through a transitional period for the last three years. This is because for the past 22 years of the ex-republic's rule, there has been a lot of human rights abuses, a lot of atrocities, suppression and oppression of people and their voices. And for that reason, we're exploring an organization called Article 19 and how they help in these different institutions in order to stabilize the human rights environment of the Gambia for the betterment of the country and its development. Let's go check it out. So Article 19 is an international human rights organization that defends freedom of expression and access to information globally. And in the Gambia currently we're assisting the government uh, during the transition. In November 2018, an EU project uh, a two-year EU project was uh, actually launched under the theme Strengthening Human Rights Standards in the Gambia. And the main objectives um, of the EU project is actually threefolded. These are the Gambia Center for Victims of Human Rights Violations in uh, Senegambia, the National Assembly of the Gambia with a focus on the Select Committee on Human Rights and Constitutional Matters, as well as the Federation of Persons with Disabilities. One of the obligations of the committee is to promote human rights and constitutional matters for the new Gambia. Through the MOU with Article 19, we have had a series of capacity enhancement programs to be for the strength of the members of the committee. But then what is most important is for the citizens to understand that there is a reference point at the National Assembly. So we're here at the Federation for the Disabled. We don't really know what to expect. Yeah, obviously during the past regime there was probably no uh, no sort of support for the disabled in this country. So with the help of Article 19 now we're going to discover the work that they do. The Federation since its establishment empower persons with disabilities to ensure equality and non-discrimination by persons with disabilities. The Federation has been embarking on a lot of activities to impact on the lives of persons with disabilities. Activities like they've been organizing trainings so that they can empower persons with disabilities to be able to advocate for their own rights. Before there was this issue of disabled being seen and as an object of scorn and pity. But um, with this image of New Gambia, we have seen disabled becoming a dignified citizens. So it's really amazing and very interesting to hear these testimonies from people uh, with disabilities and how the Federation is putting the plight and liberties of people with disability forward. But now we understand where we're heading to as a people. Now we're about to go to somewhere which is called the Victim Center and this is going to give us an idea of where we've been in the past 22 years. When you look at Victim Center, I think that he has been doing since its inception mm -hmm. is to uh, register and document human rights cases. In the center here we have the legal department where I work under Article 19. We have registered victims of sexual violence in the past regime, victims of police brutality, victims of torture. These are all things that happened during the past 22 years. When I was just about 14 years old, my dad went missing. Eight years later, that was in 2013, that was when we found out that he was actually killed. So it's been very interesting to discover more about what's going on in the Gambia because honestly I came here uh, not really researching what the country was going through because I wanted to live that experience of discovering it all. And right now I'm discovering that uh, just three years ago the Gambia was going through a huge political change. I mean, it's amazing how a country, a small country like the Gambia, was able to come together um, three years ago to oust a dictator who's been ruling the country for the 22 years. This opens up what we are about to explore more because now we are about to explore the new Gambia and the new Gambia in details. As the slogan goes, like, never again, because what had happened for the past 22 years, it's huge. It should be written in the history books. It should not be swept under the carpet. It should not be buried without people talking about it. We need to reconcile as a country. We need to reconcile as a nation for us to move forward for a better Gambia. Never again.
you just get one, I say never again. Pull me on your use, I send campaign machines, we say never again. <laughs> man in the market. Once these are identified, we focus on providing the skills and building the capacities that are needed for you to be able to take up these opportunities. I'm very excited about this project because since I've arrived in Gambia, I've been able to see how active the youth are here. So Fatu is a local news reporter and she knows a lot of people and she's been taking me on all these amazing events organized by young and talented creative people. And at the forefront of all of this, YEP is supporting a lot in this country. And one of the most successful sector is none other than the hospitality industry, where YEP gives support to over 200 youth looking for a better future. So how do the three of you feel being supported by the Youth Empowerment Project? As a returning migrant, I thought that I could not make it in my country. But as this program came in, it helps me a lot to make it in life and in my own country. Things were tough for me because since I lost my job because of the closure of the company, I had to use the other way to make things work, like going through the back way. So as a Tony, I'm very grateful for this program. Securing a job, employment after high school can be very hectic and frustrating. But with the skills, you can be employed. And if you're not employed, you can employ yourself. You're going to be a job creator instead of a job seeker. My hope for my fellow young people is so, so huge. And because the determination is there, the zeal is there, and the commitment is over 100. This is something that we do not see happening so much before, but I don't know for some reason, maybe this new dawn and this new Gambia young people are beginning to see a reason for them to be more active in every aspect of their lives. Hello. Hi. How are you? My name is Leo. Yep, I'm sponsoring you to further their education. Uh, now I can install a solar panel on my own. I can uh, wire a whole house on my own. And I also find out that they are sponsoring youths to start up their own business so that they can be successful in the country here. So I apply for it. And luckily, I also got that one also. That's the mini grant. Okay, so we are here in Ku Ku Kunkuja, Kunkuja uh, to meet uh, someone called Keba, who is one of the YEP beneficiaries. And uh, what's this place? What do you... Yeah, so here we are at his poultry farm, where he started from having just two chickens to having more than 200. So we're about to explore that. <laughs> I really love to be a farmer, and I want to specialize on the poultry. As a young poultry farmer, I'll be very happy to employ young people to empower them to get better jobs, able to feed their families, and then I believe to encourage them to make it in the Gambia than outside the country. So right now we're in Tanji on the smiling coast of Africa. The fishermen just came from a long night at sea, so they stay all night fishing and they come back in the morning for this amazing market. Well, here in Tanji is one of the best places you can have fish at a very cheap price. But we've seen what these people do here at sea. Now we have to get a little bit serious. We're exploring our next project called Mbolo. Let's see what this association is doing in the lives of people here in this community. Welcome to Fandema. I'm here to give opportunities to young girls, empowering women through renewable energy. Renewable energy is an energy that can be reused and it's so important to me because in Africa we have a lot of sunlight. So if you have solar panels, it can help us a lot to generate more energy. One of the most fascinating things about this place is that the entire facility is powered by solar and wind energy from, that was built by the students here. They have so much energy that they in fact store some and give to the outside community as well. How amazing is that? I mean, what's even more interesting is that the trainers are so, so inspiring and it's easy for the students to quickly learn and grasp things. Look at this. 
eh, 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 eh. The knowledge that I'm having, I'm really transforming it to them. So I'm there to be their role model because anytime they feel like I cannot do it, I tell them, Fatunja can do it, all of you can do it because I'm a lady like you. It's clear to me that Fandema is at the forefront of education. I've never seen a place like this, such a, a space to empower women in this situation, but just to empower young people, an education that is sustainable and that promotes human values. I'm really grateful to Mbolo for this opportunity that they have given us to empower us as women. Because some of the men do say that this is not a job for women, but we don't mind. As far as we want to empower women and we like the job, so we will really do it. I can imagine how fulfilling it is for these young women to make it to this point in their lives when they actually thought it was never going to be possible for them and their families and now they get this opportunity to be able to study and do what they want without paying a cost. It's important because renewable energy is the way forward and these women need all the mechanized approaches to be able to do uh, what they want to do best for their community as a whole. Here out on the field we can already see that all the women who come out of the Fondema project are doing practical work, they're helping the local communities by bringing solar power here to a market and also they installed a cooling system in there to help the ladies be able to sell their products for a longer period of time so it doesn't get bad. This is just fantastic to see. Now uh, with Mahmouda. Yes, we will be going to Mahmouda. So we'll see how these women are really um, using this opportunity that was given to them at the Fandema project site uh, in their own respective uh, communities. Here in Mahmouda we have a multi-solar platform that is at a very strategic location. It connects two communities that are nine and seven kilometers away from accessing electricity. What's even more interesting about this project is that the community gets electric tricycles. These tricycles do not emit gas and at the same time they help these communities to have their goods transported into the uh, solar multi-solar platform where they get stored in the refrigerators and as well get their phones charged and their other electric needs. So we're currently traveling around the country to explore an initiative called Tekifi, which means make it in the Gambia. And the name pretty much explains it all. So what we're gonna do is visit three different sites which are here to support local people in finding jobs in the Gambia. So at the moment we're looking at the project supported by IMVF and IMVF uh, started this project a few months ago and clearly we can see that they're in the path of agribusiness and what they're doing is supporting these women so that they can have the best of harvest by the end of the season and also providing them linkages where they can have access to markets which also uh, contributes to developing the agricultural value chain. <laughs> I'm <laughs> One of the most important parts in uh, the IMVF projects is the intention to provide maintenance operations. They're really teaching them how to maintain the space. And that is the essence of what the Tekifi initiative is about, helping people to make it themselves in the Gambia. And right now we're going to visit the next project with Annabel. We're here at the youth center in Farafeni where Annabelle is uh, securing job employment for the youth in uh, the field of rural infrastructure. So, right now we're about to discover how they are rebuilding the youth center using a special technology. Right now we are making bricks for compressed stabilized art blocks. This technology is very, very important in our society because we see that in Gambia, 
the sand mining is too much because when you go to the beach side, people man shining and the beach is coming nearer and we are destroying the land. As far as this technology is concerned, you can have blocks with a limited cement. Since we are employed, we see that our income earning have changed to another level. You can see my people who are working here, if you see them that they are with smiling face, because you will know that things are going nice. It looks like this is what I see the women doing here, so I might as well just join and do the same. But this is not the end of the Tech Fee project. We are now about to take a closer look at GIZ and see what they're doing in Basse. In the School of Chigamas, GIZ is supporting trainings in the field of TVET and business development for young people looking to create a brighter future for themselves. <laughs> It's nice. It's better than going to bar quick yourself and it's better than stealing. Like you guys, Alhamdulillah. Si take it TV guy, guy you go to the bar haba. No la wara deme. And the result of the Take Fee initiative goes beyond its beneficiaries who are already taking part in changing the lives of those around them. Before when the time I'm going to school, my legs pain me. Before I reach the school, it takes more time. So the wheelchair is very good. When I'm going to school, it doesn't disturb me. I thank Sigamba for giving me this wheelchair. Nobody needs to help me no more. It's a beautiful sunny morning and we're here in the Upper River region right in the middle of Basse and you can't come to this place without visiting the market. One of the things you keep seeing here are beautiful vegetables and the women are at the center of the production. But what does it take to get all the way here? So United Pope is in partnership with a local organization called Wasta is working with these local farmers, especially the local women, in uh, strengthening their farming activities and making sure that they're given the necessary skills to expand and further grow their farming business. So what they're doing is uh, giving grants and loans and supporting them in rebuilding uh, the facility of the garden. So we got fences to help keep livestock away from eating what's in the garden. And mostly important, it's the wells to implement a good irrigation system. And the next step of this project is really exciting. It's about having a solar pump to help water the garden. <laughs> I fall in the Jamala Kenya. Mummy Nin Soto Waterman and Ninga Gardino Low, coming alone and Nin Doko Latte. Nin Solica cut an infant being in Yar Nin Solica Dune, but say in Cabrina Nim Waya Soto, Nin Soto Catanato, Payan Bocambata and Nin Soli Bocadun Jero, Bea Messon Fan and Bocadun, and do some atelic and Fan and Catara do Kula. So I got to admit, the women in the Gambia are working really, really hard. Um, they're the ones gardening the most, going and then selling their vegetable. It's a hard work. It's very hot and, it, and I have a huge respect for the women here. <laughs> So here we are in a local bus and people have bought 
bought it, they're about to go and sell their goods to the market. So it's something that's quite important here because it wasn't always the case to have a bus that would go around. Because for a bus to go around, you need a road. Let's find out how all of this is happening. If there's one problem confronting the development of these communities here, is having road facilities. And so the UNAP is implementing a three road rehabilitation project in the community of Iliasa. And the process of doing this is by employing labor-based intensive work, which also includes women who are an integral part of this project. <laughs> I love watching these women work in their dresses. It's so impressive and it's important to note that the road building projects by UNOPS are the first ones in the Gambia ever to involve women, so it's a pretty big step forward to inclusiveness. And that is very inspiring because the future of any place is about having a strong community, a strong bond that can last for a long time. From Iliasa, we are here in Al Kalikunda, and right in this place, we have a road that has already been inaugurated by the president a few weeks ago, and this is also part of UNAP's rehabilitation project. So let's go check out how this road feels and meet the women down there who are currently maintaining it. The road does not feel bumpy at all compared to all the roads we've been on. We're actually standing up right now in the back of the car. It's so cute, I'm loving it. <laughs> Today we are here traveling around the North Bank region and Central River region with the World Food Program to visit two schools which are about to show us that school feeding programs are not just about giving food to kids, it's much more than that. This food gets to be produced by the farmers here in the local community. They got the opportunity to produce beyond the subsistence scale and producing on a larger scale, thereby creating food for themselves and also supplying the surplus to the schools here in this community. Since children are eating what their parents grow, they're becoming healthier. We are also told that the pass mark of students have increased significantly. When I'm in class, I feel very comfortable because this food is very good and they cook it very nice. It makes me very happy and healthy. <laughs> the ambience here cooking is just amazing. How can you be unhealthy with that? <laughs> What the women are trying to say is that, you know, potatoes are medicine. What you can do is, aside from using it just for your normal meals, you can also add milk and do it for donuts. So these kids get to be introduced to a variety of food using the same kind of ingredient for different things. So even though the food smells amazing, it looks extra tasty, what's even more fascinating is where it comes from. Nadomorfang, 
saje ya domo asi jata kende sabatindi asi dindingol fanal sondino karangala nyame but the children are not the only beneficiaries of the school feeding program. The scheme incorporates local farmers as the primary suppliers in order to enhance their livelihoods. Ngadem bank nga jël nga jël reçu 500 kilo bobu yaw lim fa am bu fekke ke da nga am ci mom 5 5 dollars ki man nga am ci mom 10 dollars wala 700 because ben yon la koy fay So here at the school Mambori we've just been welcomed with a, a play uh, by the little kids. Mm -hmm. It was really good actually and it was about the difference between a, a school uh, that is benefiting from school feeding program mm -hmm. and one that isn't and you can see a healthy child has a healthy mind mm -hmm. learning better but also that the families are affected. Yeah, yeah it's very important because when they eat the food at the school the family would not have to give them big lunch money so when they don't have food at school you realize that they always have to give them extra so it's kind of like cutting family expenses at the same time the students are given good food that contains all this all the good nutrients needed in the diet yeah. when i grow up i want to be a doctor when i grow up i want to be a teacher I da hana tin na karola ada ay din dol fanana sabatin di karangala saya felentin da hata no sol siyata do kula jama siyata bankoka ni aje o sabota ni bal wole ya sabu karam bye 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 see you soon see you soon good morning everybody <laughs> we're here this is the last video uh, so we wanted to take a little morning early stroll to to a new destination <laughs> yes and in fact just one step will be into Senegal and the first village here is Sambakuta and is the first village you get to in, in reach in Senegal and it's pretty much interesting because <laughs> we're in the Gambia and Senegal is right here it's, it's yeah. very interesting. so are you ready to discover Senegal just quickly <laughs> before we go to our last project I bet they do let's go <laughs> I can officially say that I've been both to Gambia and Senegal now ah, in yeah. Africa. <laughs> now we're in the first village you see. So we're not gonna go any further. Now we're just gonna go discover our next project, which is like the last one. Oh, us. it's the last one, but it's an interesting one. Yeah. <laughs> gonna see. This community, they need garden. So luckily, the UNCDF, through European Union, come and give us fawn in order to help this community to get vegetable garden. They will have some benefit, earning some money while they are doing work. And after that work, the garden will go back to them and they will have more benefit. So this is kind of the end of our journey and this project really reflects a little bit everything that we've seen so far. Uh, it's about women empowerment, it's about local economy, sustainability. It's quite inspiring and it's also very humbling and, and s teaching so many lessons because you know when you see a place like this, how they're clearing the land by burning it, which is not the most eco-friendly way, you also realize that these people don't have the means to do it any other way. Looking at these women who are looking forward to more economic empowerment and a way of building their resilience also so that they can adapt to the you know different changes that occur in, in the world and in the country to be specific throughout their lives the only thing they do is farming. So for the people of Kachang this is really a very good moment for them and they're looking forward to what this project has in store. <laughs> Okay.
Faces to Hearts, a vlogging project powered by the European Union, takes young people to some of the most remote places on earth to report on EU development projects that are changing people's lives for the better. So I have just arrived in the Gambia, and guess who is with me? Yeah, we are here! <laughs> In November 2019, I went to the Gambia to meet local reporter Fatou Muloshi. Together we spent one month traveling the country, searching for deep human stories. But little did we know, this trip would completely change the way we saw the world, while creating unforgettable memories. Oh my god, it's gonna shake! <laughs> <laughs> Fatu looks extra worried right now. <laughs> How you would describe faces to hearts? Oh what does God. it mean in one, one short phrase? It has to do with two people who are coming from different backgrounds, who are coming from different continents, and a lot of times you have to disagree and agree on certain things, but at the end of the day, it's always about going in for what's right, and as well, you know, being able to just let go and just learn certain things and learn new things, knowing that you don't know everything and not everything you know um, is always the best. It's, it's good to open up and accept new ideas. And that for me, connecting with my fellow Gambian people and getting to know their worries, you know, how they're able to walk through life every single day, living in an area where you don't have access to all the uh, facilities you need, I can really, you know, feel how much this means to them. He is my grandson. He needs support because he's an handicap and we are poor, we cannot assist him. So thank you very much. I'm really happy. I'm really happy about your coming. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what we've learned from this adventure, but what I'm sure of is that we will always remember this experience as one that showed us more of the world we live in and how important it is to nurture our sense of humanity at a global scale. So WFP, EU and UN, they are doing a great job here. Definitely they are helping the community and then also the students here. They are making the students to be very happy and they also eat good food. The stories we got to explore are not just about the Gambian people or about Fatu and myself. The stories are about all of us as one. Because in the end, working on improving people's lives around the globe will ultimately give place to a more peaceful and understanding world and therefore make each of our lives just a little bit better. Are you gonna cry? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, not really. But it's been amazing. And you? <laughs> oh my God, are you gonna make me cry? Because I'm gonna miss you a lot. You had to do that. No, it's been great. And you're so amazing, Kim. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>